Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about a special project, a Hanwei Naginata that's been customized, and it is really awesome, and I would like to share it with you, so please indulge. Now, this is the Naginata from sword friend Corey that he was gracious enough two years ago, believe it or not, to lend me, and he hasn't ever gotten a hold. This Naginata, he sent it to me when it was brand new, and then I was fortunate enough to be the middleman in the in the project, so it got sent back to me. I got to play with it a little bit more, and very soon, sword friend Corey will get to see his, his beat-up Naginata fittings, as well as this new, cool freshly mounted awesome Naginata. Anyway, I will tell you a little bit about the differences between the two. One of my critiques in the review that I made a couple years ago was that I wish it was longer, I wish it was more stable, I wish it was a better product. And Sword Friend Corey said, well, what does it take to make that happen? And I guess let's do that. So that was a longer poll with some custom fittings and such, and so we, we went down that path. But I'll tell you about it. First, I want to harp on the differences, at least dynamically and overall, maybe just the the specs if you will so it's obviously the same blade the same tang the same hanwei blade that came with the original naginata as well as the habaki that is the original component the rest of the components were either purchased separately or fabricated or made specifically for the project the pull from the hanwei naginata was about 55 inches and the total weight of the the naginata was four pounds ten ounces now this blade is the same obviously it's the same blade but a different pole and despite being a longer pole with what looks like more metal uh, it's actually 10 ounces lighter it's four pounds uh, well basically four pounds just a little over four pounds four pounds 0.04 ounces and the lengthwise it actually ends up being 92 and a half inches overall versus 76 and three quarter inches overall so it's, it's a much longer longer piece anyway those are some of the dynamic differences and it certainly makes a big difference in, in how it feels to maneuver also the blade feel of the the nagi pole feels more rigid but i'll talk about dynamics in just a second first what i want to tell you is the journey it took to get this naginata here so first it started with the original hanwei naginata from cult of athena which sword friend cory was gracious gracious enough to purchase and send to me it was about 570 dollars at the time sword friend cory bought it then we went to fred loman company and bought the naginata set of fittings that were offered from from his website and unfortunately the ishizuka the little shovel head at the end of the naginata pole was not included he didn't have any so he sold it for the, the fittings he had for a little bit less money and, and didn't include the Ishizuka. Now this left a, a little bit of a void in terms of how to complete the fitting set. Uh, it's customary to, I suppose, have a little shovel head, it could be a little spike, it could be something else, it could just be a, a wooden butted end of the pole, it doesn't have to have any fitting on it. But for some reason, I, I guess we kind of stuck on the shovel head, and after a year of not finding anything on eBay, second hand, or, well, anything at a reasonable price, we ended up working with a sword friend Mike, Mike Curley, the Forged and Fire champion, Spicy Mike as he's also known, to make an Ishizuka, something he had never done before. And so it was a little weird, given that he didn't have the fittings and didn't have anything in hand, and was obviously, it's, it's kind of an obscure thing to make, but still, sword friend Mike opted to go ahead and make something. He made me two Ishizuka at a kind of a buddy deal. I was very lucky to, to get that done. And I guess they were made out of pieces from his Forged in Fire, uh, Forged in Fire pole arm or something that he had made from Forged in Fire. It's some 1095 something something. I can't remember exactly what he sent me. But anyway, the basic gist is Sword Friend Mike made the Ishizuka. He tossed it at the concrete a couple times to make sure it was solid. If it took a, a thwack on the concrete, it should be more suitable than at least whatever Hanway sent, given that the Hanway piece is broken. Anyway, Sword Friend Mike made the Ishizuka. Then it went off to the Mystery Man in Black to do up some mounting, and boy oh boy did he do a pretty splendid job. So the difference is obviously you see the pieces from Fred Lohman Company, they look different and they're fit on in such a way that are, I don't know, they just stand out a little bit more. Now the Naginata blade had brass fittings or a brass habaki on it, and it also had some red lacquer in the little um, the little crevices, the bohi or the decoration of Sanskrit or whatever it is on the, the bohi area, the fuller area section on the blade. What the Mystery Man in Black did was actually uh, basically use some red throughout. The boar's eyes of the little hearts that are in the fittings got little touches of red. Um, then the, the tang section was bound in linen or some sort of twine uh, to add additional rigidity. It shouldn't certainly split. It's been lacquered and coated and overall just very, very good looking stuff. The pole itself is also very interesting. It's actually a laminated pole. It's, it's two 
two different sections that are glued together. So basically it's made in effect similar to a shirasaya. Now traditionally a pole arm might be made a little differently. They might hollow out a groove for the nakago or the tang to sit in and then fill it back in with a shim or something to that effect. But this is made more like a shirasaya. Two planes of wood are cut and then it's hollowed out for the nakago to fit in like a, a, a tsuka core or a shirasaya or something like my, that might be. And then uh, they're glued together with, with wood glue, and obviously there's some bindings and stuff like that in the actual pole arm. these uh, metal rings that go around to keep it from splitting, but that act of having two different pieces of wood uh, coupled with wood glue makes a stronger product. One, the grains aren't all going in one place, and it it helps keep the pole straighter. Uh, I believe it's got a few coats of clear on it as well. I'm not sure what stain was used. I believe it's some sort of oak uh, that's used on the pole arm itself. And then towards the end, you can see sword friend Mike's Ishizuka, the little shovel head that's been boiled in tea or something like that to give it, give it a look. And I have tested this. I whacked it into wood a few times and it is a lot more stable than the iteration from Hanway was. Also, the Hanway, the little Makugi fell out and it was kind of a pain to, to keep together. Uh, this one seems very stable. Nothing's rolling around. None of the fittings come loose while I'm swinging it around. I did do a little bit of cutting with it. I got to cut some water bottles after it was done. It cut well. I still am not great at cutting with the Naginata. I practice some Nagijitsu or Naginata Jitsu. I basically, it's part of Katori. I swing a Naginata around, but I don't really cut with them very often. So I have a long way to improve, particularly on the upward strikes. Thrusting isn't terribly odd. It feels a lot more comfortable to index and actually cut with. I was much more successful making it through a tatami mat, and these are actually used Japanese tatami mats, which are a little more rigid than the things I was testing before. And I, I did have more luck cutting, but I, I still could do better, certainly. Anyway, it's much more fun, has much more reach, and feels much more stable in my hand. Now, this is also still bouncy. It's not as rigid as the Boken iteration of a Naginata that I'd use, but dynamically speaking, the length and just how it feels in my hand, how it indexes, how it moves, is far in a way superior to what it came out of Hanway. And to be fair, it's, it's obviously an order of magnitude better in terms of the overall fit and finish. I'm very pleased with how it came out. Hopefully it's obvious that I really enjoy the overall aesthetics of this blade. I think it's really, really cool looking. The fittings from Fred Loman look great. The little Suba that was made by the Mystery Man in Black looks good. The overall coloration, just the aesthetic patterns, I am super thrilled with everything. If I had to be critical, there's one little transition that doesn't stand out as great to me, and I suppose that is where the Hibaki meets the Suba and, and kind of goes into the polearm. There's a transition there that seems like it's a little uh, offsides on where the edge meets the haba uh, edge meets the habaki and transitions into the suba uh, but really this isn't something that i can hold against anyone involved it's not the fault of the mystery man in black or the fittings it's really just the mismatch of parts and i have to give a tip of my hat to the mystery man in black here for making it as obscured as it as it is uh, the basic just is the Hanwha piece is a, lar a very large Naginata blade. It's perhaps larger than some antiques might be. There's some antiques obviously that might be much larger, but it has a Habaki size that's very proportional to a Katana. And the fittings are really on the small side. Now we kept with Fred Lohman fittings in this project. Uh, custom fittings would have been a lot more expensive and uh, to keep the cost uh, in, in, the, in the more reasonable range the Fred Lohman fittings were used. Unfortunately they were a little on the small side and so when you have to mix and match parts that don't necessarily fit to keep the transition as small as it is is really is is really quite a feat. So tip of my hat to the mystery man in black there. 
that's really the only piece of complaint I can give. I was really concerned as well that the fittings would be too small, and now the Hanwei fittings are larger, and one of my complaints was that the pole arm felt flimsy and wasn't very rigid and felt too bouncy. Now this is also bouncy, but somehow it still feels more rigid despite increased size in terms of length as well as the fittings being smaller. Uh, part of that is likely due to the Mystery Man in Black providing a laminated pole arm which has grain structures that move in different ways, and aesthetically it has some things that are really cool, but the, the strength is increased overall, and perhaps that is one, one way that it's, it's kept stronger. In any case, it is overall a very beautifully executed pull-on. I am super thrilled that I got to, to swing it around as much as I did. Also, a special thanks to sword friend Cory, who has not gotten to hold this Naginata for two years. Uh, that's ridiculous. Anyway, I appreciate his patience and his trust, and I am glad that I got to be in the middle of this project because it means I got to swing this Naginata around and it was, it was really, really fun. Not something I get to do every day, and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. I hope he does as well. Anyway, that is all I have for you. I hope that this video has been interesting. As always, cheers, and thanks for watching.